So BotGhost allows users to set up and customize bots according to their needs without any coding knowledge. Yes, and I didn't know this earlier. I Googled it and that's how I found out. So today, as a bot developer, as a professional bot developer, I'll be trying the bot ghost experience. As you might know, or perhaps you don't, I've been developing bots for three years, and for one year, I've been making YouTube videos related to Discord bots. I usually spend two, three hours coding a single system, and even more if the system is complex. But today, we don't even need to code. That's what bot ghost claims. A lot of people also use it. So let's see how it works. Today, we'll create a ticket system on BotGhost and check how easy it is. First, I'll go to my channel, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Now, I'll search for a ticket system. This ticket system took me six days to make before, but today, we'll create one on BotGhost and see how it works. In the end, we'll also rate it out of 10. So, let's go. So, here's the BotGhost website. And there's a lot to explore here, but I'm not here to check everything right now. Uh, our goal is to create a complete ticket system. So let's quickly click on the create a bot button. And from here, I'll log in using my Discord account. Uh, now it's asking me to provide a bot token. So all right, let's quickly click on the developer portal button. I'll create a new bot there set it up, and even give it a logo. Let's go. Now we have our bot token, so I'll provide the token here and click Create Bot. All right, so now we're here, but this pop-up is showing up asking us to join their Discord server. But what if I don't want to join? Oh, all right. If you click anywhere on the screen, this box will disappear. That's good. All right, now we have the full dashboard to manage the bot, and they even have premium features. Nice. But of course, we're not going for those. So what do we need to do now? There are a lot of things here. So first I'll go to the settings and check out what's available there. From the settings, we can change the bot's name and avatar, and we can also set the bot's status message. Nice. After that, we can manage the bot token and stop, restart, or delete the bot. Next, we can manage the bot's intents from here. Nice. Then there's the invite tab, so let's click on it. Nice. From here, we can invite the bot. So I'll invite it to my server. Now our bot has been added to the server. After that, there's a data storage tab, which I don't fully understand yet, but I think it's related to the database. So let's leave it for now. Next, there's servers, which shows all the servers where the bot is added. Nice. Then there's status, where we can set the bot's status, but it's disabled, and I think that's a premium feature. Then there's collab, which allows more than one person to uh, work on a bot. After that, there's error logs. And you can also get the active developer badge from here. Nice. Uh, I think we'll leave the other tabs for now. Now, I see a market tab, so let me click on it. Oh, okay, nice. This is a marketplace where people upload systems they've built using bot ghost so others can use them. Nice, but we'll create our own system. One thing I noticed is that BotGhost doesn't seem to be very active now because most of the things I see here are from two years ago. Well, let's head back to our dashboard and click on Command Builder. Wow, nice. Here's our complete working area, and I can see a lot of options here. First, we need to create a slash command and register it. Let's click here and give the slash command a name and description. Now let's see what other options we have. Oh, nice. There are many options available, uh, like whether to show replies or not, who can see the replies, command cooldown, allowed roles, banned roles, and then required permissions. In the required permissions, I'll set administrator from there. Bro, it's that easy. All right, now I'll click on the save command button. All right. Now I'm on my Discord server. Let's see if the command has been uh, registered or not. Uh, the bot is online, so let me try a slash command. Oh, here we go. It's showing the command name along with the description. But if I run it, it obviously won't work yet. Uh, all right, let's go back. Now we'll add a few more things. First, we need to select a channel where we'll send the ticket panel, right? For that, I'll go to the options. 
There are many options here. Text, number, user, channel, role, choice, and attachment. I mean, almost everything is available here. However, I don't see a Boolean option. Anyway, we need the channel option, so I'll drag the channel option into the builder. Now it's asking me for an optional name and description as well as whether this option should be required. Very nice. So I'll give this option a name and a good description and then mark it as required. And uh, yes, I can see here that we can use this for reference in the response. Nice, we'll do that later. All right, this is done. Next, we'll go to actions. First, we need to show a reply when the slash command is run. For that, I'll select a plain text reply here. Now we'll attach it to the channel or maybe something else. I'm not sure yet, but let's attach it to the slash command for now. Then we'll write something like ticket panel sent to this channel. Nice. We can set whether we want to send a reply or a message. After that, let's add a reaction for fun. Now, we need to send a message to the channel uh, the user selected. For that, I'll select the send a message to a channel option. Wait, I need to send an embed and a button too. So I guess I should select this option instead. First, I'll remove the previous block and add this one here. I'll design it the embed quickly. Then I'll select the specific text channel from the dropdown and set the channel type to specific channel. The specific channel will be the one provided by the user. Very nice. Next, let's design the button quickly. Nice, that's done. But now I'm unsure about which block to link this to. If I attach it to the slash command, it's not working. So let's attach it to this one and see what happens. All right, let's save the command and go back to Discord. Here, I'll create a category named Ticket and a channel called Ticket Panel. Now let's run the command, select the channel, and send it. Oh wait, it worked. I didn't expect it to work on the first try and it even sent the panel in the selected channel. Very nice. Now, we need to create a new channel when the button is clicked, so let's do that. So, for that, we search for channel here. And yes, we need to select create a channel. I'll drag it and link it with the button. Here, it's asking for a variable, which will let us get the ID of the created channel. I'm not sure if we'll use it or not, but uh, let's add something here, like channel ID. Next is the channel name. So now we need to set the name of the channel to ticket along with the name of the user who created it, right? Uh, how will that be done? Let me click here and search for user. Ah, there's a user object. Let's click on info and oh, here's the documentation. So I guess the username will show up something like this. Before that, let me add ticket as a prefix. So yeah, done. Then comes the type of channel, which will be a text channel. Now here it's asking for a category, but we didn't create a category. So let me copy the category ID and provide it here. After that, we need to set permissions, so only the person who created the channel can see it. Let's click on Add Permission, then select User and the same user object. I don't know what I'm doing, but I hope it works. Then allow Send Messages and Read Message History, and yeah, that's it. Now let's save the command, and I'll go click the button to try it out. So I tried a lot, but nothing is happening. I mean, it should create a channel, but it's not creating one. I don't know what mistake I've made. So I don't know. I tried a lot of things, even tried different actions, but nothing was working. It says here that the action attached to the button should run when clicked, but nothing was happening. So then I simply changed the button to a select menu and it was the same and quite easy. So let's test it now by running the command. I sent it to the channel. And from there, let's select this. So I don't know, but the select menu also worked only once the first time and then stopped working. Maybe there are bugs in it, or uh, I don't know how to use it properly. After that, I also tried creating a thread so that a thread would be created, but that didn't work either. Then I took help from their support server and thought I'd revert back to using the button until someone could help me. So I reset everything back to how it was before. And after doing all that, now I'm waiting for someone to help me so this can work. 
Um, so after that, the support team asked me to share the code for this, which I went to do on the dashboard. There I noticed error logs, so I clicked on them and I was shown a lot of errors. I think I figured out what the issue was and how to fix it. After that, I simply went and changed it, saved the command, and when I clicked, it finally worked. Next, we needed to attach an embed with a close button to the ticket so we could close it. So, uh, let's do it. Here we go. Uh, I completed everything, and now the builder looks something like this. I also added a few more things so it could send a confirmation embed with two buttons. Now it's working perfectly. It's creating tickets, sending embeds, and everything. So, yeah, now let's rate it. I mean, it's been a nice experience and very easy to understand their interface and everything, but we all know that with coding, we have 100% customization and many more options. Still, this is great for people who don't know coding and need simple systems, so I would rate it 7 out of 10. Um, that's it. If you like the video, please comment, like the video, and subscribe to the channel. I see they also have a dashboard builder, so if you'd like a video on that too, let me know, and I'll make one. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.